Hello, I'm Greg Lamb with the Sleater Group. This is part three of my review of QuickBooks Online, which I'll call QBO throughout the video. In this video, I'll talk about the import and export of data, add-ons, reports, sales taxes, QuickBooks Online Accountant, file attachments, and offer my overall opinion of QBO. Let's start off with getting your data out of QBO. If I go to Settings, then Export, you'll see there's an option to export QBO's data to a QuickBooks desktop file or to create a local copy. What it doesn't say is that you can't reload either export back into QBO. So once your data is out of QBO, you can't get it back in. Also, the local copy of data is simply a partial data dump into an XML file, which doesn't necessarily contain all your data. My fellow Sleater Group contributor, Charlie Russell, actually goes into more detail regarding this in a blog post, which you can access by clicking the link. Besides using the export page, you can also export any report, which I'll show you in a bit. But first, let me talk about importing data. There's very little ability to get data into QBO using the built-in tools. If I go to Settings, then choose Import Data, you'll see that I can only import customers and vendors, chart of accounts, bank transactions, and products and services. If you compare QBO to Xero and Zoho Books, which both let you import most transaction types, like invoices and bills via spreadsheet files, you'll realize how little QBO lets you import. However, I'd be remiss to mention that QBO does have an add-on called Transaction Pro Importer that does let you import many transactions and lists via a spreadsheet file. It also costs extra money, of course, but at least it can let you import data via spreadsheets if this is something you want to do on a regular basis. And this is a good time to talk about apps. As of June 2014, QBO has 61 apps listed in its App Center. It's a decent number but it's assuredly behind Zero, which now has 300 plus add-ons listed. This can probably be attributed somewhat to the fact that until late 2013, QBO's API wasn't nearly as open as it is now. As you can see, it's now free to access and there are no connection fees. An API, by the way, stands for Application Program and Interface and is a way for developers to connect to QBO. So the switch to a more open API is good news for QBO developers, and consequently, QBO users. If you want some in-depth coverage on QBO's API, again, Charlie Russell has a fantastic article. I mentioned earlier that you can also export data via reports in QBO, so let's check that out. I'll go to Reports. If I check out the standard profit and loss report, you can see that I have the option to export this report via Excel. That's true for all the reports. Where QBO excels in comparison to its online accounting software competitors is its ability to customize reports. There's a fair amount of options over here. For example, if I only want the report to contain certain accounts, I can use select multiple and then choose which accounts I want. And the nice thing is that when I create the report, I can then save the customizations to use the report again later on. QBO has a decent amount of reports. I don't know of an easy way to see all the reports in a big list, but you can go to all reports and then you'll see all the different categories. If you're coming from QuickBooks desktop, the reporting is not as robust, but like I said, in comparison to online competitors, QBO does really well. I'll now move on to sales taxes. In general, I always find sales taxes hard to evaluate since there are so many unique sales tax scenarios that can occur. What I can comment on though, is that I do find QBO's sales tax page helpful. I like how tax tracking, filing, and reports can all be accessed via this page. I also like how you can record a tax payment from this page and even a tax adjustment. Out of all the products I reviewed, I found dealing with taxes in QBO to be the easiest. Entering taxes is also decent in QBO. Let's go to create an invoice. You see here, you can choose whether individual line items are taxable or not. If you're only dealing with simple taxes in a single jurisdiction, QBO should be just fine. If you're dealing with more complex tax scenarios, like having to make sales in multiple states, then you may want to consider using something like Avalara's QuickBooks product. I'm going to switch over to another browser to quickly show you QBOA, or in other words, QuickBooks Online Accountant. So first of all, 
if you have QBOA, your QuickBooks Online will look like this. There's a special accounting tab with an accountant home. And there's also a book to tax feature. And if I click on settings, you'll see there are also some accountant only options. I won't go more into depth about QBOA in this video review, but yet again, Charlie Russell has an article about QBOA, which you can get to by clicking the link shown. Now I'll move on to file attachments. This is your central repository for all file attachments in QBO, whether they're associated with a transaction or not. If the file is associated, you'll see a link to the transaction, which I find quite handy. Adding a new file to here is as simple as dragging and dropping it in. Unfortunately, there's no image preview for PDFs as there is for images. But if you go to edit the PDF, you do indeed get to see it. You'll also be able to change the title and add some notes if you like. With file attachments, you also have the option to create an invoice or an expense. You're not able to create other transaction types from here though. It's too bad. One nice to see feature is that you can easily export all your files by clicking on batch actions and then export. Well, I say all, but it may only be all the ones you see on the page. So you might have to do this several times if you want to export all your files. Even though there is a dedicated attachment page, you can also add attachments as you create transactions. So if I go to create an expense, at the bottom, you'll notice that I can drag and drop a file in. This is true for most transaction types found in the Create menu. Attachments in QBO is at the level where I'd use it with my clients as a way to document transactions. A couple things I wanted to mention is that QBO has payroll and a mobile app. I won't cover them in this video review, but I will mention that the mobile app is not a fully functional app, but it will work for most of the things you'd like to do on the road. QBO's payroll requires an additional subscription to that service. The nice thing is that it's integrated into QBO. There's lots of options available for Intuit's payroll, so I suggest checking out payroll.intuit.com for more information. And now for my wrap up. I think QBO is a very capable online accountant software product. For those new to accountant software who are considering QuickBooks, I'd recommend testing out QBO first. It's a free trial after all, and see if it can do what you need it to do. Now, QBO can't do everything, and while it's improving every year, it doesn't match some of the capabilities found in QuickBooks Desktop. But if QBO can do what your business needs, I'd recommend using it instead of QuickBooks Desktop since there are a lot of advantages to online, like anytime, anywhere access, collaboration, and no installation of software, to name a few things. For a detailed analysis of QuickBooks Online and other online accountant software, please check out my ebook called Online Accountant Software, Finding the Right Match. And for more videos like this, please subscribe to the Sleater Group YouTube channel. I'm Greg Lamb with the Sleater Group, and I'll catch you on the flip side.